Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to what you... At this point, you already know what this, that this is TNO. The last of you're up, we're playing is Philip and we have the first checkpoint. And it's high time. We check in on employment rights nationwide. In order to play get the movers and shakers of DC, we must prove our agenda bears fruit, depending on the results. We will adjust accordingly. If all is humming along according to the plan, it's the ammunition our administration will assail with our adversaries with. And quantifying success. President Hart was finishing a cup of coffee in the Oval Office, like me, when HUD Secretary Jacobs knocked on the door. After being ushered in, she carried a pack of stack of papers onto the President's desk. They were filled with numbers and graphs, the product of many hours of painstaking work. Jacobs beamed with pride at the sight. The results of our pilot programs are in. Crime, homelessness, poverty are dropping across the board while assistance happiness ratings are up, turning upward, she said. Hart nodded. Fantastic work, Madam Secretary. This will prove that naysayers is wrong. We just need to find the best way to advertise it. What do you think? Secretary Jacobs uh, took a minute to think. Perhaps we could set quotas for initiatives such as crime fighting, housing, or poverty reduction. The president chuckled. Madame, you surely aren't suggesting some Bolshevik planning system. Oh, goodness, no! exclaimed uh, Secretary Jacobs with a laugh. Just guidelines, nothing more. She paused, her expression growing more somber. Unfortunately, you'll need to choose which area to focus on crime, homelessness, or poverty. Limited funding and all that. Who knows if this works out? Perhaps we can try to get next year. It's hard to decide. Keep what she'd say. Ever to tackle crime, homelessness, poverty. Well, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand ish. So, city quotas. Well, fellow completed our burden. Has set his goal for whatever wants urban renewal programs to get cheap. By the end of the year, participating cities must cut poverty rate by a certain amount. I want to reduce poverty. Yeah. High poverty will decrease, high crime will decrease. For participating cities must cut the poverty rate by 5%. Okay, I like that idea. Rules and regulations. Budget hawks will decrease um, their disdain. Our administration will keep cities aware of the looming presence of a budget despite their lucrative programs. There is no excuse for endless spending. Progress on urban stability, because right now it's a little bit too high, but all across America, our administration sought to give Americans the rise they deserve. The lift out of the malaise nailed to the door of the hands of the defeated backwardness and corruption. Now the single mother can arrive to work on time thanks to public transportation funding. The elderly couple does not need to worry about their power going out due to family false wiring. And every young child of our country can attend school with a newfound readiness and excitement. Nevertheless, localities across America need our help to ensure that the money being dispensed towards their cities or from coffers of the federal government is being properly delegated towards uses that benefit Americans, rather than allowing any to be lost due to economic attrition, or even worse, that same corruption, corruption that attacked our predecessors now. Governors, mayors, state legislatures, and city councils will have an outline as to the do's and don'ts of this federal relief package. Well, let's hope so. Uh, 33 billion still pretty good. Do we change here? Nope, we're still the same. Voice on the inside. Reigniting domestic production. An honest plaid. The second checkpoint. Must conclude first. Okay. So this is might be still bugged. We still can't get that one. Mm. The do's and don'ts. Alf oh, Nader. Nader? I'm not sure how to ever pronounce that, but. Nader's no friend of ours, but he's earned a lot of press with his book, Unsafe at Any Speed, which alleges a series of unsafe practices by car manufacturers and the traffic safety establishment. It's got people in Congress into an uproar and demanding investigations. We flip through the thing and find the whole thing absurd, just completely absurd. But there's perhaps a kernel of wisdom behind Mr. Nader's absurd claim. We can do what experts have been asking us to do for a long time by mandating that states implement national driving laws, seatbelt requirements, and car maintenance requirements. We can reduce federal highway dollars to the states that refuse to check for people driving under the influence. Some state legislators and libertarians will be mad, certainly, but we'd be saving lives with a strike of a pen with these rules. Launches a leadership plane in the National Caucus. If you about that, please go ahead. Ah, oh, you mean some caffeine. Polls are updated. Oh, we're still... Yeah, that's right. We're doing polling stuff here, too. Or at least, you know, election stuff. 37. Not bad. 43. 95. 60. Um, Social welfare is doing okay. There are no crises, which means this is bugged. Which sucks. Hey, 98%. 0.3. Interstate 95. Can we get her done? Hey, excellent campaign. Nice. Prediction? 5 and 10. That's not bad still. The solid south is not solid anymore. 98.3. Come on. 99 something. 99.1. Not bad. The do's and don'ts, of course. Um, hitting the town would not be bad either. Um, the best weapons. 
forces on the inside, sure. American working unions and the government. Name a bigger battle in the country's workforce. To put it simply, you can't. However, with a friend and ally in Walter Reuther, and a president willing to get the job done, America's workers and their unions will find a newfound partnership in the government that they so often butt heads with. Now having a right their brother on the side of their unionizations and multi-organizational meetings, our administration will be capable of heading to the frontiers or front lines for American workers. I know exactly what these unions are going to be wanting ahead of the curve to get there. We need to send our best men to, best to, the, to, to the man, making sure that he knows that Philip Hart is the president for the working man just as much as anybody, and that we'll be ready to come to the needs of right there and all the unions across the country. After all, working together works. What do we have over here? 99% of the way there, my friends. Also, this is a so electrifying. It's probably going to take a while. Resolving resource shortage issue. So, we'll see. This, this one we can't really do much else, so... Yeah. And who are you? Now that the Roy through blessing has been bestowed upon our presidency, it's time to make sure that we do not make the mistake of associating with every single element of the working movement in the country. Um, after all, some of the socialists and radicals have had a history of rev riot, revolt, and revenge, giving these groups what they want, uh, would simply be equivalent to stepping on the same landmine we buried. Useless. Destructive. Wanted. Instead, our administration will play our positive card and our negative cards right to make sure that America comes out of the best in this grand magic card. By offering incentives towards the more low and moderate unions and curtailing the acceptance of the unfixables, we shall be able to make sure that the right unions join as the right, at, at the right time, just with the right forms of encouragement needed to give the American worker what they really, truly need. As we're in the game, uh, safe and happy May, everybody. Happy May. Ah, oh, you mean a lot of coffee. What could be better than this? That freedom ring. Happiness is always pretty important. Yeah, we'll do a commit to rural America. The U.S. is one of the last strongholds of freedom, democracy, and liberty in the world of today. And President Howard would be darned if our country, if sat such upon a highly prestigious country, would be diseased with backwater. Electrification. As a new way forward for administration's work, and while our seasoned suburbs have been retrofitted with proper modifications necessary to power American homes and businesses, our rural countryside has been left in the dust by the past administrations. Well, Philip Parr, Chet Morrison, and Jane Jacobs know their way around the proper setup of a city, the towns come around for front liners on rural infrastructure projects to make their way across crop fields, valleys, and small-time towns to overcome the threshold of power lines and generators for this modern age. The Iron Eagle and the Rising Sun shall no longer be looked at as state strong, strong state's potential for assistance. Instead, the stars and stripes will crackle within the power of our modernized power grid. Aw, oh, yeah. Uh, eh, I'll just go over here. Why not? Probably still getting better. Gotta keep it on this, because even though the economy's like just crapping the bed right now, we're still cutting them down to that, and once we get that one done, I'll no longer do tax, temp tax hike, but we'll do a temporary tax cut to hopefully raise our uh, growth, but we'll see. Nice. Industrial Anthem would be nice too. But these gas prices are gosh, too gosh darn high. Coming to a rural America. Phil and Ted's excellent adventure, which is spelled incorrectly with excellent, but that's okay. That's okay. This gas price is too darn high. The pain at the pump. It's a common refrain these days. People are spending as much as 38 cents a gallon when they go to fill their tank. That's fueling a great amount of animosity towards the country. People are cutting trips short, and the satires on the late, site, late night shows are presenting those stories about all the ways people have tried to cut down a cost. A personal favorite. A woman in Ann Arbor literally removed all the doors and seats in her car to improve its mileage. Gas prices. Beyond control. Oh, the present, but there's still a little we can do to reduce some of the pain people are experiencing. In particular, we can sign some new trade deals to increase the national oil supply. Tragedy struck the conclusion of the hero. Um, born in Richard Cousin, the death of almost all state leaders. Just like that, the oil flows once more. Wait, what happened? Nothing's changed there, which is disappointing. Oh, it's, it's gone. Oh, here's... Oh. Oh, they just all died. They literally all just died. Bro, that sucks. Ah, the excellent adventure. On Air Force One, Ted Kennedy and Philip Hart sat in the meeting room. Philip, in between the bites of a breakfast sandwich, asked a question to Ted. Give me the rundown, tell you how it's looking. Hey, I got that 95 done too. Nice. That is uh, not so good, Phil, not so good. We've got a ton of disillusioned farmers who feel a lot behind. We've got to tear them, hear them out for hours. Ted took a sip of coffee. It gets worse. Uh, we've got to make promises, too. Ones we probably can't keep. Philip grimaced, and he had to make a promise, especially when uh, odds of fulfilling them were slim to none. Nevertheless, he nodded, adjusting for Ted to continue. More specifically, rural subsidies, investment, investments in farming technology. That's a gutsy gamble, but it can be done. I see, and whose idea was it again, Hard Inquirer? It was Chaps. We've been pushing too much on our urban agenda. He's recommended, no, it's time to pull back and check in on the ruralities. Ted took another sip, and Phil came up with a quick response. Well, at least I can say I've been to Colorado once this trip is done. Yeah... I want to do that too, but we don't need any more of this 
to improve. Um, I was about the right stuff. Just much more schools. Well, are we building roads yet? We're still building power plants and whatnot. We got a lot of crap ton of power plants. Best weapons. Um, best weapons. Our American youth are growing up in a world far different than the one even their parents knew. Technology is advanced at a mind-boggling pace. Political developments are constant, only getting faster in a wave of social changes swept through America's foundations. Our nations are under threat by twin fascist empires across both nations. Few times in the nation's history have been so tumultuous as this, or nor so crucial. A little mind would see a situation decide that the only way to succeed is through direct force. A stronger army, more nuclear weapons, more interventions, simple solutions, however, are not always the right ones. What President Hart believes is that America cannot simply fight to win the present. It also must plan and set up to its future for success. To do that, we must invest in the future of our children, creating opportunities and building the foundations of a sturdy and able education. These bright youngsters will eventually take the reins from us as the hand of time eternally dictates from the best way to assure that their success is to give them a full deck of cards. Short sighted opponents of Hart's long reaching agenda may decry us as pointless speculative spending, but we in the White House know better. In 20 years, our winner students have begun charting America's course. They have no choice but to thank us for our proactive work. It's the least we can do. Hey, you might have got more voters or two, maybe? Maybe not. Actually, we might have lost some Democrats, whatever. I'm sorry. But not really. The price is just too god darn high. Yeah, they run a miserable campaign, as they should. Um, a conservative, huh? Has died there. Um, hitting the town. No business is meritorious. Meritorious and more capable of contributing positivity to its neighbors and leaving a non toxic legacy behind than your average small business in a typical urban district. Local branches of national or, God forbid, multinational companies simply do not compare in terms of raw benefit to their surroundings. Even in the president's own experience, the businesses that allowed this or that national brand to taint them were nothing compared to the mom and pop shops um, that competed with them. That's why he and a lot of his closest friends or confidants, too, are like, I like to say things like, You gotta love local business. The president has determined that now is the perfect time to pro prove that these words are more than just mere talk. Uh, by seeing local businesses grow, we will see local wealth and the power of the American dollar grow at the same time. That should be nice. Sundown. More responsibility. American sport. Despite the recent progress of the United States government in the work of preserving civil rights, uh, there are some extremely bold instances of racial discrimination that continue to take place in the defiance of the declarations of the White House, the Supreme Court, and the United States Congress. Some of the most flagrant cases of these across country are the presumption of outright ban measures from minority groups from even existing within certain cities. These are the so-called sundown laws. Sundown laws have effectively butchered any method of nurturing any sort of racial justice within the cities. Uh, <clears throat> they have them, even after the recent movements of the United States government towards civil rights. Obviously, this is permitted to continue. More horror stories of lynchings and other harassment will make their way to our desk, and the country will be ever further destabilized. Therefore, President Hart and the White House leadership have undertaken to ban uh, these at the best deeply problematic diktats nationwide. Nomination of Thurgood Marshall. A press conference today that has dominated headlines across the country, President Philip Hart has announced that Thurgood Marshall, currently a judge in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, will be nominated to the newly vacated seat on the Supreme Court. Marshall, a graduate of Harvard Law School and an experienced civil rights litigator, would be the first African American to serve in the highest court in the land. His appointment would surely mark a turning point in American history, however. Some in Congress are not so willing to see such a point turn in the first place. Many senators come from the South and are directly relying on white voter blocks who aren't well disposed towards putting a black man on the Supreme Court. Several members of the Senate have already put out statements to the press uh, uh, expressing their firm opposition. Although nobody's come out and said that it would be due to Marshall's race indeed, or instead, the releases mentioned the dangers of liberal judicial activism and other such phrases. Clearly, the appointment of Thurgood Marshall will be a political fight for the ages. The right thing, the right time, the right man, the right place, I hope. Alright, let's go look see on him to see where he's at. This isn't going any better, or this is not going any better, too, which is, means it's just bugging. 64 say yeah, 43 say nay, less than half the Republicans say yay, all the Democrats are like, cool, the Nationals don't care, and the progressive Marshall's yeah. nomination fails. Following the nomination of Thurgood Marshall, the Supreme Court once said that a senator was reported to have claimed we'll fight this nomination all the way until the health freezes over, and then we'll skate across the ice. It would appear that as of the day, the fight has succeeded. Two weeks ago, the Senate Judiciary Committee had voted to have Marshall's nomination proceed to the Senate floor, but with a recommendation that it be rejected. Seen by as many as death knelt for their appointment, but still our whips persisted in trying to gather the necessary votes, they failed in a tight vote. The Senate rejected Marshall's nomination, led by a large block of reactionary Southerners. Uh, observers are stunned um, uh, by the rejection of the man who had been the first black Supreme Court justice. Some in the White House were already drafting plans for, of course, a response. Um, <clears throat> the next name on that short list is a fairly conservative Lewis F. Powell Jr. Let's hope that he makes it. What well, that is this country come to? Powell Jr. would be voting instead. Also, we saw earlier that it, he was going to be nominated, but the game is literally bugged still, so it kind of sucks. Um, let's wait till after the midterms, I think. Or not, it's not really the midterms, no. It's an election year. 
Um, and we went with Schleifey. I didn't read that, but like, we'll see about pushing for environmental reforms as well. Good RDC campaign. Good. Hitting the towns, of course. I like hitting things. Oh, we just did that one, huh? Cool. And up next is Hut. Greece. Oh, I'm going to be bad at you. Upkeep cost goes up, which kind of sucks. Agriculture begins rapidly improve. The American consumer. Oh, no. Uh, the first steps of the Hart's uh, administration's by American policy will go into effect. Once you remember that this policy cannot enter here or else, the American consumer will be left to foot the bill. An honest plea. We could do that. Oh, we can do five. Wait, what? Another event isn't distracting the legislature. Okay, well, it's done. So if you want to read this again, please see. Please uh, uh, go right ahead. But Or maybe I've not read this before. Maybe I have. Oh, well. In these past several months, hard administrations crew across country, leaving Washington and other havens to take charge of things. Yeah, I did read this one before. There's the establishment of observers. They've not been the, been the usual humdrum bureaucrats that once he's mocked in the papers. They've been filled with a bounce and excitement for the American infrastructure. And that is stirring. Their verve and brains is what has made them possible seem possible. Let's later this initiative, the push for high-speed trains is only possible because of the people and their desire to make America better. We owe it to them, the American people, to pass a bill that can bring about real change in transportation that can help consumers of all types of live their lives. We can find we can bring people together and show them much as an act of federal government can do. An introduction to the U.S. DOC Modernization Act of 1972. Now this act, <clears throat> which we have 81 say yes, yeah, so we should better not fail this, it has been introduced to Congress while hardly drawing significant public attention. The bill succeeded in drawing the attention of Washington's bureaucrats and politics. Our politicos all move opinions on the proposed reforms. Among other things, the U.S. DOC Modernization Act will allow the Department of Commerce to work with states on establishing and keeping the highway program running on time. The bill supports the President Hart, who is described as a giant leap forward for both American and transportation reform agenda. The bill now waits uh, in the Senate as proponents and detractors trade favors and whips votes to secure Hart a victory or to send the bill to an antagonist defeat. Time for change and Mr. Amtrak. Oh, the urban wealth has increased their disdain. I like that. Uh, for President Hart, by minus 10%. Yeah, why not? When, uh, when people thought of Philip Hart, they used to think of him as a conscious of the Senate. Average push to revitalize America's rails, he was gaining a new moniker. Mr. Amtrak. Even the Washington Post taking a print of cartoons of the president in a conduct a conductor staff pushing America forward. Oh. Carl Olaf Talgreen elected as Finnish Prime Minister, eh? Uh, but all jokes aside, that's just what this administration will of course do. Uh, we'll go further than any of the administration, of course, before. We'll build track after track to bring towns and roads and country to the country. Uh, to bring towns around the country together. Well, this new wave of prosperity and ingenuity, built one built on the bright-eyed uh, ambition of our federal workforce. President Hart will be the Mr. Amtrak that tens of millions know he can be. Well, let's hope so. Because he better be. Let's see anything change here. 40? Okay, now it went down to 40%. Slight change. Uh, global conflicts can be closed out for now. Global. Ooh, yes. Uh, still not that great. Anything else here? We have walkable roads. Which might not be too bad, but still. Uh, Republican Democrat primaries. Uh, delegates are all over the U.S. have arrived at Miami Beach, Florida, and the convention center there. So, to inaugurate President Philip Hart as the pro Republican Democratic candidate for president. After four years in the White House, it's time for another presidential election, so the whole country can determine if the incumbent deserves another term or if it's time, of course, for a change. The primaries for the RDC <clears throat> was short and sweet this year as only one candidate emerged to challenge president. Former governor of Michigan, George Romney. However, like usual in American politics, it's next to impossible to be an incumbent president of the convention, and Romney's long shot attempt quickly fell flat, turning the RDC convention uh, into a coronation for uh, President Hart. Uh, Hart, uh, promising another term of prosperity and, of course, success. The president <clears throat> focused his sights on the National Progressive Pact, readying his coalition to take them on for four more years. Paved roads, I would might want to do paved roads, but we'll see. We're still doing railroad crossings as well, so. Um, we're getting there. 30%. We started with zero with some of these groups, so which is actually pretty decent for us. Still electrifying, though. Full steam ahead, my friends. Full steam ahead, Mr. Amtrak. Yeah, it passes the Senate, that does. Applause and golf the Senate's uh, uh, the, the, the final necessary vote for approving the bill is tally. The Department of Commerce could be modernized and reformed as soon as President Hart signed the bill, which was already on its way to his desk. The proponents of the bill, disappointed by the failure, opponents of it, clap globally along. The bill's passage is an important moment for all Americans, with President Hart's wide-ranging reform plans touching every aspect of American life, particularly transport and commerce. The modern and efficient Department of Commerce is a crucial and critical. Due to the bill's passage, the Hart administration will be able to work with states and get truly into the fine details of future reforms and improve their implementation. A breath, sh fresh, a breath, a fresh air in D.C. Amtrak's overall speed will increase by 20%. The interstate highway program's overall speed will increase by 10%. Nice. Live to fight another day. Major defeat for the Hart White House. The fires of war are unquenched, crushing defeat for international uh, peasers. 
Oh. Hart looked down. Oh, good God, what the heck? If the newspaper was littering his desk inside, there's no way around. He failed in the sights of the whole nation. A knock on the door to the Oval Office shook him from his thoughts. Henry Kissinger walked in. Henry, Hart said, I'm sorry we couldn't get this treaty passed. So am I, Mr. President, Kissinger said. That's what I'm here about. He handed Hart a letter. It's been a true honor to serve this country, but it's clear the American people are not ready for this administration's foreign policy agenda. I think it's best to step out of that limelight at this time. Hart suppressed a sigh. What's he supposed to say here? Henry, we're in the middle of a critical period in national security. I can't accept the resignation now. It was the right choice, even with this failure Kissinger. Success is made up for more than that, but just as Hart washed him and swaggered out of the Oval Office, uh, part of him wished he had made a different choice. The work continues. What the heck? Man, this is really bugged. I don't like that. I don't like how bugged this is. Breaking the ice. We didn't get to that. Well, I always knew blood. Well, maybe we'll go there. I don't know. That's not cool. Everything old shall now become new. The sharp would be... Uh, well, we maybe want to save that one, take a step back. Let's, let's still do this one too, which wouldn't be bad either, but still. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Let's see. So we did all this, which is pretty good for us. Um, spending. Burning. Well, I guess, you know, the industrial anthem. The victors of the Second World War so altered the world economy that most of its treasure now gravitated towards a fascist one on one pole and a Nazi on the other. The gap America once filled yawns like a pitch black mall. Beckett. Her to come and take what had long been and will forever be hers by encouraging the peoples of this country to pivot back towards the virtues of American products. We encourage more and more people to push our country back on the railroad forward against the Nazis, the fascists, and the imperialists. No matter the cost and no matter the loss, never more will we as a country tolerate the international failures of our past and the bending of the knee towards our enemies abroad. Of course, the same old voices of concern and contrarianism walk over our work, saying that the immediate financial pitfalls outweigh our goals in the long run. But if anyone can get uh, America to buy American, it'll gonna be. Fill apart with the event by America. So I went back, and instead of us failing detente, we did a team of rivals. Yes, Harry, I, yes, it's definitely regrettable. I'm sorry I feel that, that that way. I'll handle the situation. Harp sat the Oval Office's phone down with a sigh. The day was supposed to be a great triumph, but instead of celebrations, he had to deal with the Secretary of State, who felt locked out of the loop of one of the most important negotiations of his presidency. And Hart couldn't get really disagree. He picked the phone back up and gave me Dr. Kissinger. Hart normally would have greeted Kissinger with some form of pleasantries, but not today. Harry Truman wants to know how long we'll be conducting diplomacy in the shadows, Hart said as soon as Kissinger closed the doors. For a split second, Kissinger looked startled, then he straightened himself, meeting Hart's fixed stare. With all due respect, Mr. President, what is it that you want me to say? I have laid out my reasoning for secrecy. Secretary Thruman has laid out his, op his, his for openness. I see little reason to relitigate re these arguments, particularly in light of the demonstra demonstrable success of my approach. Your approach has a cabinet at each other's throat. Hart almost shot it. Kissinger gave it a furious shrug. Fine then, listen to the Secretary Truman. I bet on all that we've done in return to floundering wildly in a tripolar world. I understand the reality of this world perfectly, Dr. Kissinger, Hart said, a snarling emphasis on the other man's formal title as he leaned forward. I also understand that Secretary Truman has been serving this country since before you were born. He's entitled to more regard than we've shown him. Kissinger let out a cruel, barking laugh. Regard? You talk of regard. What kind of regard for tens of millions in the mass graves littering Europe is cause? Of Nazi madness. I think they deserve more regard than the bruised ego of a doddering old man. If Truman wants some more allies, he can do so to my face, he turned. When he reached the door, he gave Hart a nod. Good day, Mr. President. Peace abroad, strife at home. And our tensions will decrease because we agreed to nuclear reductions. Well, our uh, tensions will decrease even more. And then because we allowed, agreed to allow Japanese investment in the Pacific sphere, uh, we'll get better relations. With the signing of the Pacific Area Security Treaty, Kissinger's detente is not fully established. Where we can go from here? Then we just finished Starlight. Anyone under that, please go ahead. By American. Joaquin Kill. Uh, aside, perhaps has gone up again for his latest truckload of goods. At this rate of store, a shop ride would be out of business by year's end. He gave the paperwork to his subordinate, and he reached for the newspaper on his desk. Hoping to relieve his stress, Joaquin read the newspaper after having to go, a go at the crossword puzzle. His eyes drifted to the various do articles dotting his favorite newspaper, The Record. It was working. Joaquin was near the end of his shift, anyways. Reading it to fold in the newspaper, Joaquin's eyes started to dart to the last article, relegated to the last pages of the paper, read, the president pursues piss poor policy protectionism. The article said it all no more seeds from Brazil, no more grain for Canada. Preposterous in Joaquin's eyes. Protectionism only served to widen the already fat margins of the American farmers reeled in. While thoroughly irate, the manager grabbed his phone. He would be calling his representative. Oh boy. Consumers revolt. Shnikes. America sport. Well, let's deal with this revolt first. Also, we are. I am trying the bill for the national health insurance once again. 55. We got 50 freaking 5. And the dream shall never die. Look at this. Okay. Phil wasn't a particularly vibrant celebrity. He had a drink or two, gave his congratulations, and go on his way. That show will be broken on the date the National Health Insurance Insurance Act passed through the Senate floor. And he had yet to sign it, but that was just a foregone conclusion for the healthcare activists. Policy gurus, liberal think tanks, and Colorado Senator Edward Kennedy. Hard after a small interest, Janie simply leaned against the Resolute and waited. Ted finally came in some 30 seconds after Phil began away. Who is this? Phil opened, bringing out a twinge of sarcasm that felt so un very unfamiliar to his own ears. 
Oh, just a guy who slapped the best darn healthcare bill possible on your darn shiny desk. Ted cried out, sounding the teeniest bit tipsy. Four hard kid responded, the voice chimed in, darn right, in an oath of another Cajun accent. Jeff was with you all out as a party. Phil joked, mixed laugh, radiated from the other end. Heck yeah, I had to see that kid who managed to make every conservative interest group from Greenland to California piss their pants with my own darn eyes. Good job to all of us. Sincere congratulations, Phil, and to you, kid. Give an equally slurred ramble. Hark it almost here, Chef. Slap Kennedy on the shoulder. Calm down, you two. Ha, screw that. You're the one who's sitting on his fat butt, not even drinking. Kennedy screamed back. Hart moved the phone a bit away from his ear. Though it may have been a bit too late to save him from minor hearing loss. Okay, okay, I'll get slurred up and out right now. I want to talk to you, said Hart. After Chep left, Kennedy and Hart simmered down and enjoyed each other's company. I am really proud of you, Ted. You've done great stuff for America. Ted sincere small permitted through the telephone as he replied. Thank you, Phil. That means a lot coming from you. Phil smiled right back. Keep up with the good work, Ted. You got a lot more ahead. The place low income protections with universal coverage. Um, more political power, more monthly population stability, way higher policy cost per capita, but better monthly po poverty change, health care quality, monthly change, uh, health care policy, more happiness, poverty rate will begin to slowly improve, and spend a crap ton of money. Overall, not bad. Consumers revolt. Oh, God. We'll fail if... Higher administration protect the city quotas. Oh, God. Oh, well, it looks like it's getting slightly better. City quotas. What is our burden? Buy American is not something that can be just left to the American people. It's up to the Hart administration to attempt to make the system viable for consumers. Oh, crap. I guess we have to go there now. But happy August, everybody. We're, uh, gee, uh, economy's not growing too much more, but the debt's looking okay. 70.79 billion. Dropped down 68.41. Nice. And honest plea. For President Hart, what the administration says will happen. Uh, however, it's time to remind the American people that not only do we mean every word of we say, what we say, but we have the means to make it happen. What this country can accomplish is untold, and in order to encourage Americans to support Americans with the consumer front above uh, potential international substitutes, we need to properly feed the engines of American industry. The coal that this furnace needs to start firing up. American labor standards will swirl in the thunderous maelstrom, ready for the long journey to ahead to increase production standards across the country while guaranteeing the safety and security of the American working class across every state and city in this long, wide country. No longer will our rivals and enemies dominate the market that the virtuous American people construct their lives off of. Instead, American products from our American industries by American hands will, be, will move our lives forward. The Setting Sun. Therefore, it is with the opinion of this court, after hearing the arguments presented by both the plaintiff, the United States, and the defendant of the county of Lafayette, that we decided to rule in favor of the plaintiff. All sundown laws in Lafayette towns and municipalities must be repealed by the end of the month. The court is adjourned. Trevor Haynes let out his breath as had he been holding that was the 10th county in Mississippi that he had their sundown laws dismantled, knowing that Iowa that was just evoked in the court. Haynes vacated the premises of a nearby diner in downtown Jacksonville with his legal team. Thirty minutes later, the famished legal team was munching down on their meal. The Trevor stared out the window. The sun was just starting to set. Watching the sunset, huh? One female member of the team nudged Haynes on the shoulder. Oh, yeah, it's ironic, isn't it? We just mantled the sun downtown here and we're watching the sunset. Haynes cracked a smirk. You're going places, you know, the legal aide commented. Trevor said he knew they'd want a black man climb the ranks to show that the legal system's changing. I suppose I will be. I just wish it'd be more meritocratic. The aide laughed, meritocratic. Do you think anyone on the Supreme Court got there by merit? Nodding Haynes responded, you got a point. It'll be more of a struggle for me with administration changes, but you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. I'm Jewish and a woman after all. The young woman jested, smirking. Trevor responded with, you'll be fine, Ruth. In fact, I'll see you going further than I will. Huh. 99% is way too good. Yeah, we're on a good campaign. The deep south, that was enough for them. Yeah, just diminish them. Why not? Nice. Oh, social expenditures. Oh, don't mind if we do. Oh, God. That's not looking good. Slightly more high GDP growth, but still. An honest plea, my friends. An honest, honest plea. All they can still do is breaking the ice. And if not, uh, I'm going to force cheat it probably eventually. Greece. The American working class is on the move, and with every passing day, the assembly line goes faster and faster. As the heart and hands of America produce the greatest products possible for every citizen's family out there on the market. We move faster, stronger, smarter than we have ever had before, limiting it to the confines of the suburbs and cities with only, which will only hamper our efforts. Instead, it's time to unleash a monster of industry onto the farmlands of this country, covering the fields, orchards, and grazing pens with high-tech electrified equipment such as tractors, combine, harvesters, and cedars. The slick and lighting that car charges are great production efforts across the country will aim their sights down upon the farmers' for farmhands, making sure that American backs will never be broken again and produce the best yields of a country which can it can't provide. A flicker of worry. Philip Hartz. A uh, shave was going well. The razor smoothly slicing stubbles that traced along his cheek. Luxurious sweets, once an honor he had avoided, went out of the campaign trail. It had become practically forced upon him once he took the Oval Office. He still wasn't entirely comfortable with their extravagance, but he admitted that they made a fine place to sleep. 
and good place was often hard to come by in this work. Uh, there's a letter for you, darling. Someone built in the house by National Parks. Do you want it? Janie's voice echoed through the door, reaching up and drawing a smile on the president's face. He set his razor down. Make sure his sh shave was smooth and empty the sink of water. Yes, Janie, can you bring my shirt in too? A moment later, Janie barged in, holding a hanger with hearts buttoned up in one hand and a letter in the other. Look at me. Carrying all your things around, you know, she paused abruptly. Philip turned around to look at her, only for her to grab his shoulder and point him back towards the mirror. What's that? What's, what's what? There's a black mark on your back. There wasn't there before. Well, I don't know. Looking at my back's a bit difficult. Philip cracked a smile as his wife didn't reciprocate. Finally relented. I'll get a check when I get it back to Washington, alright? Come on, Jenny, I don't want it. your nerves fried for nothing. Uh oh. Um. Jenny frowned. You're better, darling. Supreme Court promise. strikes down a uh, flag burning ban in the latest news out of Washington. It was proven to be one of the most controversial Supreme Court uh, cases in our nation's sisters coming to an end. Supreme Court has decided that the burning of the U.S. flag constitutes speech protected under the First Amendment, rendering any bans on the flag un being unconstitutional now. Across the country, the reaction has been mixed. Conservative groups in both major parties have decried the movement as yet another instance of judicial activism. From a liberal democratic dominated court, some, such as the nationalist firebrand Phyllis Schleife, has gone even further to decrying the decision as part of the flash fascist plot to destroy the very soul of America. Many aligned with the current administration, however, have applauded the move, considering it to be another victory in the struggle for free speech. The American Civil Liberties Union, whose lawsuit against the state of Texas began the court battle that resulted in this. Uh, decision has voiced support, promising to continue the struggle for what sees as essential liberties. The battle may have been won, but the culture never were over. But the culture were over rever reverence for the flag shows no sign of slowing. This is Girl to Cronkite, and that's the Riding way it is. High. On Monday, Kissinger had a date with Nancy. Truth be told, he had his eye on her since she'd been staffed from Rockefeller's aboard a 1964 presidential campaign. He had a lot of chances with other women throughout Washington, D.C. He kept coming back to her. He did hope that this one went well. On Tuesday, Kissinger was sitting down for an interview with the Washington Post. Several papers had approached him. Actually, it was only natural that he had, after all, done the impossible. He had scrubbed over the whole scars of the Pacific War with the power of diplomacy, and the whole nation waited with bated breath over how he had done it, and Kissinger was delighted to tell them, of course. On Wednesday, he was appearing on Meet the Press. It was for the 1972 election, of course. The president wanted him to remind everyone of his accomplishments for the administration. Accomplishments, of course, that Kissinger had masterminded. However, he was, of course, happy to play his part, as long as he was properly acknowledged. It wasn't even all the newspaper appearances. When he walked through the streets of Washington, people's heads turned and followed him. At one point, some lesser specimen of the American people even approached him, screaming some obscenities similar to those that Kissinger had heard in the childhood, his childhood in Germany. But it always been a scared child then. Now, now he was able he was able to do what he was, was meant to be doing. And he would bring detente to its conclusion. One final effort, with success in the ne detente negotiations, Kissinger would go for the gold on treaty ports in Hawaii. Does that open this one up? It does not bring the ice. Kissinger's done it again, def deftly maneuvering us into a favorable bargaining position against the Japanese Empire. Success is fleeting, though, it is now or never to begin our offensive. Uh, not on the battlefield, but in the halls of marine laden embassies. Or marine laden embassies. On the airways of tense diplomatic back channels, with any luck, we'll negotiate the return of the treaty ports, and if all goes according to the plan, we'll bring Hawaii back into the fold. It's time to mend our shameful scars and make our mark on history. Which we have to do. But I did forget to do this one earlier, as you probably saw before it faded out, fade out the full seam ahead. And Mr. Amtrak, which is still going fine, everything old shall become new. So, oh uh, yeah, I read this earlier, really, I think so. Or maybe not. The rails are the veins of an artist of America's transportation system, then what is a heart? President Hart believes that there should be not be just one beating heart, but countless. Each railway should have their own number of cities directly connected to it in order to act as a catalyst for the movement of goods, people, and ideas. To this end, President Hart encourages these rail towns to be expanded to larger cities connected to the central system of the United States will breathe new life or new blood into the tracks. Countless starts for countless veins will make the blood flow strong and unyielding, and with it, America will grow stronger, but a burden. Uh, when it comes to industrial products, history has shown that nine times out of ten, the consumers are the ones who take the hit for the governments across the world, trying their hand in improving both the factories and the markets. Since the inception of this country through our founding fathers, the freedom of enterprise and successful livelihood has been a guarantee. No, a demanded or damned mandate of being an American. Then fell apart and tends to keep it that way. Sure, the costs of improving American industry are heavy to bear for everyone involved in the process, but the role of the government is to assume that these difficulties so that no one else has to. And yes, the conservative budget hawks will continue on their path of whining and moaning over our operations, but we have heard their complaints before, and we shall hear them again, but this time we shall have our diagnosis. Way James Young, a White House physician, was not having a good start of his morning. Everything felt off. There's gloves on his hands, a coat on his body, the way the chair felt on his back. The feel of the papers in his hands. Oh God, he's getting old. People talk about how the president's job was the most stressful in the world. Well, how about being the president's doctor? The president was right there, about five feet to his right, his wife by his side. He seemed happier than her. Some stoicism, maybe, or maybe a simple belief that everything was fine. Physically, the president was fine. There was a thing, no symptoms, no weakness, nothing but behind the scenes. Mr. President, Dr. Young began, my team and I have run some tests. His hands were shaking a little to realize, jostling the papers. We took some samples and found that you... He paused, adjusting himself, cleared his throat, and willed himself to continue. You have melanoma, Mr. President. The president's face fell. 
That's why I've never won for crying, turned away with tears in her eyes. Dr. Young continued almost in automatically. It's so possible to treat the cancer, but since it's entered a later stage, surgery, preferably soon, will be the easiest way to remove the growth. We've made a custom treatment plan for you that'll help with the discussion if you'd like to have a look. Philip Bart remained silent. His mom was a thousand miles away, back home in Michigan. It's cancer. After everything, he, everything he'd gone through to get this far, it was cancer. This wasn't fair. It wasn't fair at all. Without even realizing, thinking, he nodded. Discretion. The second checkpoint. After we do by uh, American, of course, always oh, been his green. Uh, the 20th century has been the battleground for civil rights at every walk of life, from the flight of the workers, uh, rights of workers under assault from Rockefeller and business practice, to the very battle for African American rights across the country happening as we speak. And now, with the Jews on the run from the Nazi mess, bearing their anti Semitic fangs across Europe, and the Americans of all forms in retreat with the KKK running amok, it's high time for our administration to pave the way forward in terms of equality within this country. The biggest issue? Businesses. Allow, willingly segregating the consumers and disallowing some for protecting within their shops, restaurants, and more. No longer. By offering financial incentives for large and small businesses across the country that are racially, sexually, or religiously, and nationally desegregate, we encourage a new era of freedom in the free market for all Americans. The current of the economy flows stronger with the more dollars pushing through the market. We've got to get every American out there spending freely and Another spending. Another was a rare occurrence indeed for a Ruji Takeuchi to find himself in the White House. It's supposed to be probably a byproduct of being an ambassador to a nation that's country delivered the most traumatic defeat in its history. But then he just played a major role in soothing these tensions. Perhaps he'd just be finding himself in the White House more often as the two countries grew closer together. Ambassador, welcome you by now become used to the gravelly voice of Henry Kissinger. I'm very pleased with the work we've done here so far, I'm sure you as you are. I've called you here today to discuss whether we might preserve it for the next future generations. For all we've done, the next president of the Prime Minister may abandon it. I propose a new agreement to make new ties between the countries so that no new president will break it. Takeuchi rose from his eyebrows, or rose his eyebrows. Permanent ties? He didn't know that he wanted this. After all, this man had been to get the Americans out the spheres back, not make allies of them. But Kissinger, after all this time, had spent had his respect. Society to buy it, and how do you propose we do that? Kissinger's lip curled in a smirk. But Takeuchi by now knew, knew so well. Oil, 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 oil. And noted absence. Hey, Tom. Hey, Gary. Uh, Gary sounded over the coffee machine with the air of a man who had a sore to tell. Tom glanced at his cup, still filling. Then back over to his co-worker. Around them, the business of the White House flowed. Secretaries carried papers and folders. Men in suits darted from room to room. The biggest names of D.C. a regular site, going about their frantic business. Sure, this is the most stressful, exciting baby workplace in the country, but even the bureaucrats and aides had to have their banal office gossip as much as that pain Tom. You know what I've noticed? Gary began leaning against the file cabinet. I haven't seen the president at all. He's a Camp David blockhead, remember? Vacation and all that. Tom looked back at his cup, cup, uh, c coffee cup now half full. He estimated he had 30 seconds or so before he was done here. No, no, I did some poking around. Nobody else has seen him either. And you know what I just heard? Enlighten me. Some secretaries say he got driven over to Walter Reed. He's working there. That gave Tom pause. He looked back at Gary, eyebrows raised at the hospital. Why? Nobody knows, Gary continued, tugging at his collar and glancing around. But the rumor is he's getting some operation for something. I buy I mean, why else would he be there? His eyes now flickered down the hallway. Then in Tom's mug, without another word, he darted off. Tom looked down. In his contemplation, he hadn't even realized his coffee was overflowing, spilling dark stains all over his sleep. The letter. Someone oh, should boy. know about some, this. Uh, Mr. President, some days ago we executed an operation to remove the cancer section of skin from your back at the time. We asked you to continue to send samples in order to continue to test for further cancers and determine whether future treatment was needed. Unfortunately, we have determined that from the LDH test that your melanoma is a metastasized into your liver. By the distance between the side of the melanoma and the liver, it can be assumed that your cancer spread into other closer organs. They are grouped to inform you that you are dying. The typical prognosis for metastasized melanoma is six months, of course, to a year. I can only express my deepest condolences. And we did not catch us sooner, and promise you the best of treatment in the coming days. Please reach out to me at your soonest convenience, yours, Dr. James Young. Teardrops fall upon the paper one by one. Now, I was told that this should happen, like, in 1975, not 1972. Um, President Hart is going to die. All good things must come to an end, but it's not quite time for the end. Let's work to continue even once Hart is gone. We must make sure of that. So, um, he's Jacobs on Shep. Cancer worsens. Oh, maybe he does die then. Okay, then. For the past few years in the administration... Uh, we've overcome many challenges. This, unfortunately, is not a challenge we can overcome. We must stall his own agenda to ensure that it doesn't die with him. Must stall. Has com to complete. Uh, has got his affairs in order. We will reflect on Shep's career and discuss the transition with Humphrey as well. But, all right, well, you know, we're going to keep going and pushing no matter what, if possible. Um, now, all the focuses are locked. Uh... Um. Oh, resignation preparations. Well, let's see what this one says first. Tim to come for Jacobs on the thought of Morrison presidency. Well, I guess we have to, you know. I don't want to say that we want to do this, but, you know, it kind of sucks. Overall, you know. But I guess we'll wait and see. 
the last request. There have been a lot of things Jane Jacobs wanted to say to her boss when she heard the news, but now, sitting across from him in the Oval Office for what had to be one of his last one of the last times, she realized that there was nothing she, else she could say. All was left was two words, I'm sorry. It pained her to see the exhaustion in his eyes, but there was. Still, that same strength with which he changed the country as he met her gaze. Thank you, Jane. Uh, I'll, I'll say my goodbyes to you another time. For now, we need to talk about Chip. He continued on in a reflexive objection. Dad in the throat. He's going to be the president after me, like it or not. And he needs your support. He's going to keep everything we've accomplished going strong. I know that you have your differences with him. But he's a good man, and his record in New York, or New Orleans, New Orleans will do, show he'll do right by the country. I'm sorry, Mr. President. I just can't. Jacob's fought to keep her voice down as she spoke. When he was mayor, he was everything we fought against. Racism. Redlining. I understand. You had to balance ticket, but Chip is president? No, it's too much. I'm sorry. People can change, Jane, the president said. Jeff has changed. He's seen the importance of what we're doing. I know he has. He massages temples. Look, even if I wanted to, there's nothing I can do about that, will mean, which will mean he won't be president. All he can do is either work with him to honor my legacy or to push him to be better, or resign. But if you resign, don't act like you're taking some brave stand. You'll be given up what I fought for all my life. He deflated. You don't have to do it for him or even for me, but everyone we've helped needs you to keep fighting for them in the White House after I'm gone. Can you be the advocate to him like you were to me? Jacob looked down at her hands, swallowing, then she made his gaze again. I'll do it. For them, for you, so be it. Uh, reflect on Chip's career, discuss troubles with Jacobs. We'll have a heart to heart with Jacobs on troubles plaguing Chip, which means we're going to keep going through this before we can do anything else. Leakage. President Hart sat back in the Oval Office, uh, looking over reports about quarterly economic growth in Chicago. Any thoughts he might have had about the findings were interrupted by the ringing, of course, of his phone. He picked it up. Hello? As the president, he swallowed the sound of Secretary of State Truman's voice. I assume that the covert actions of our very own Metternich are the root of this cape ball I've received from Tokyo. They want new negotiations on Pacific trade and even the return of the treaty ports in L.A. Hart wins. Harry, I know we have our differences on the topic of secrecy, and I'm truly sorry for any offense, but it's a good thing. We're on the cusp of diplomatically reversing the worst humiliations countries ever suffered. Surely that's low, worth, worth a little secrecy. I've made my peace with this administration's attitude towards secrecy, Mr. President, Truman said, but this hasn't stayed secret. Check the paper. Someone in the States decided to do a leak. Hart's face paled. Extra, extra, read all about it. Oh, boy. But we also have better industrial expertise. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Shut up, us out a little bit here. Uh, the growth is pretty bad. Marriage troubles. The office of the presidency was an issue. Uh, it was an office of enormous power and influence, one that could make or break or destroy nations. It was also an office that required its occupant to participate in assortment of small humiliations. Philip Parr thought about this now as he fussed with his bow tie at the pre White House press correspondence diner or dinner. I feel like a boy dressed up for the first comedian, Hart muttered. I don't know how Chip does these darn things. Jane Jacobs, dressed in a black dress and pearls, gave a small laugh. Oh, I suppose you had to be good at something. Hart stopped playing with his tie and gave Jacobs a stern look. Oh, for God's sake, Philip, let me have some fun. You're both in the Chep and his wife have none of the guts but want all the glory. Hart shook his head. It's cruel. Jane, Chep tries hard and the president looks around. Now he really did look like a schoolboy, making sure there was no teachers present. He and Zaza have having a rough go of it. Have you seen the thing she says about him in the gossip rags? And Jane, he's heard her shouting. God, Philip, are you telling me that the vice president is being bullied by his wife, Jacob said? But she immediately regretted the remark. She'd worked with women in abusive relationships before, and she knew better than anyone that, that even the most successful people had difficult relationships. The fact that she hadn't thought about it before, then that she hadn't considered that abuse could go both ways or be invisible to her, she felt her cheeks flush. You're right, Philip. It was cruel. I won't pretend to change my attitude, but I'll keep the troubles in mind. A little kindness is all I ask, so we gotta keep doing this. Prepare resignation. Oh, after 1973. Oh, good God. We'll draft his resignation. This will allow him to resign at any point. I'll focus on the remaining policy he can squeeze in. Um, his cancer worsens. Uh, well, we can do that later. I mean, we could probably do all this stuff as well. But I do want to wait because we are not doing a focus. Ooh, civil rights is doing better now, too. Consumers Revolt has completed our burden. We do need to do that as well. Efficiency is going down, but the rate of poverty is not increasing, which is good, I think. So, um, walkable paths, street lights. Oh, big, ooh, generic deep up. Poverty rate monthly, homelessness rate, big box mart. Ooh. Police station. Eh, let's see anything over here. Nope. Um, so there's this, but like I said earlier, it is still kind of bug this campaign, which kind of sucks. Um, I do want to see what the results of the elections are like, but we're gonna do a focus first before we keep going on. Um, that one's not bad. Sharply gains trust, but we can do our burden. All spin is green. Uh, well, we'll do that one first, as I do want to see the election results first. Like I said. Oh, there you go. Second checkpoint. Huh. Cooperative act. Catapult. Or burden. I definitely want to do that one next. We're going to do this again please go ahead. Second checkpoint. Now we're getting somewhere. Thanks to the bright minds and valiant hearts of the administration, we have managed to put America back on its forward track. Jugging along and picking up every downtrodden American who has been afflicted with infrastructure, financial viability, or livelihood that was simply inadequate for the potential of this country. Now, 
Staffords look at how far we've come and release a small formal audit and investigation of the results of our work thus far. Thereby, we can assure Americans that we shall not falter by instead investigating every success and failure. See where we can improve, where we can relax, and where we need to move on to in terms of our goals for the year. Philip Hart is a man of action. Now is his time to see what Americans truly, truly deserve. As we'll go and uh, reflect on Jacob's work, Jeff's career. Oh, Jacob's work, why not? 14 days is going to take a while for that one. That, that's all right. Reef policy agenda, tactical bombers. 1972. Screw it. We're going to go right uh, there. Election results are now going to be what? Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, boy. Um, I think we won. Very handily. Holy crap. 1972. President Hart. Well, 55 million to 43 million, which is relative. Not really that close at all. 400 versus 118. Even the South is no longer solid with Lee Zian and George going RD. The Rockies. Oh, the, yeah, the Rockies are pretty interesting. Holy crap! Look at that. We have 80 RDs. 80 senators for us. Wow, there's only 18 NPP. Jesus. You know, they got a little bit more support than the last election. No, no, no. This was 1960. Never mind. It's 1972 now. The previous election, they got beaten even worse. They had more votes overall. So 47 versus 41. 55 versus 43. So they did get more votes, but we got 8 million more. Is this just because of population growth? So basically, they lost even more states almost. Jesus Christ. Uh, popularities. Sense controlled by the RD coalition. Wow. So impressive. But I think we're going to end the episode here because well, I want your opinions as to what we'll do next. Should we race and resign? If the administration was plagued with crisis, heart will not be able to resign. Reflect on his career, cancer worsens. Should we resign or should we do everything that we possibly can before he dies? Because we still have a lot to do before he dies. And we might be able to get everything done, but I kind of don't think so. But hey, you never know, especially when we want to break the ice. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. As well, see and read what your uh, thoughts are in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.